Thank you. I call on Claire Hawking, Minister. Ten minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. We all have mental health. This is a simple truth, but one that hasn't shaped the services supporting our health and well-being. For generations, mental health has been misunderstood and stigmatised. It hasn't been treated as importantly or as comprehensively as physical health. I know there is a consensus across this chamber that this needs to change. This government is absolutely committed to bringing change to people's lives. We made Scotland the first nation in the world to introduce a waiting times target for CAMS and the first in the UK to have a target for psychological therapies. In 2017, we declared our ambition with a 10-year mental health strategy. Now we are raising the bar further. We have an unprecedented opportunity to build a world-class mental health system that works for everyone. And today I will set out how we will do this. We have already committed a quarter of a billion pounds of additional investment through our programme for government. Through a comprehensive package, we will take action to reform children and young people's mental health services improve specialist services for all who need them, take a 21st century approach to adult mental health, respect, protect and fulfil rights and make suicide prevention everybody's business. I will start with the services that support our children and young people. Although they are seeing more people than ever, waiting times for specialist services are unacceptable. There are gaps in the community support available for children and young people with less acute issues and there is poor out-of-hours help available at times of crisis. We have not shied away from open and honest discussions about these challenges. Indeed, we commissioned an audit of rejected referrals. When that report was published in June, we accepted all of its recommendations. It's why we established a joint task force with COSLA under the chair of Dr. Dame Denise Koya to look at children and young people's mental health. Dame Denise published her initial recommendations in September. I'm pleased that today the task force has published its delivery plan. It is an ambitious programme of work that will inform what the whole of the public sector and beyond can do to realise our shared ambitions. To support this work, today I announced we will invest £4 million in additional CAM staff across Scotland. This will be distributed through NHS Education in Scotland. These staff will be instrumental in supporting the new services announced in the programme for government, as well as reducing pressure in the existing system. It is right that we are taking immediate action to support the workforce, as they are the heart of our efforts for better mental health in Scotland. And I want to give my thanks to the essential work and inspiring commitment of those working with children, young people and adults with mental health issues. The programme for government makes clear our commitment to rapid, significant change. Mental health is at its heart. I want to ensure that we progress this work quickly and effectively. And for that reason, I am pleased to publish today a delivery plan that sets out how we will use the resources and commitment in the programme for government to reform and improve mental health services in Scotland. That delivery plan presents a comprehensive reform of support for children and young people. We will substantially expand the range of perinatal support available to women, and from next year, we will provide the educational tools to meet workforce needs, recruit and train primary care psychological therapists, and roll out effective models of supporting perinatal and infant health. We will ensure that early intervention to support children and young people is embedded in our schools. We will invest over £60 million in additional school counselling services across all of Scotland and create around 350 counsellors in school education. We will have additional 250 school nurses in place by 2022. And we will enhance support and professional learning materials for teachers on good mental health. By the end of 2019-20 academic year, every local authority will be offered training for teachers in mental health first aid. In further and higher education, we will provide more than 80 additional counsellors over the next four years through an investment of around £20 million. And we will improve services for community mental wellbeing for five to 24 year olds and their families. We want them to have direct and immediate access to counselling sessions, self-care advice and family and peer-to-peer -peer support. 
During 2019, we will expand the successful Distress Brief Intervention Programme to include people under the age of 18. And we will make mental health and suicide prevention training mandatory for all NHS staff who receive mandatory physical health training. I will now turn to waiting times. In recent years, performance has varied across Scotland. Some NHS boards have regularly met or been close to meeting the 18-week waiting time standards. Others have struggled to deliver over a sustained period. The Scottish Government is already investing £54 million over four years to improve access to mental health services, but we are not yet seeing the improvement we need. So we are going to intensify our actions. All NHS boards will have in place plans to uh, drive rapid improvement by spring next year. NHS Healthcare Improvement Scotland will work with all NHS boards to support those plans. And this will ensure that people get the right help at the right time without being subject to unnecessarily long waits. That work will be overseen by a new mental health delivery board, which I will chair. It will ensure that progress is tracked regularly and any obstacles are quickly addressed. And this group will drive the actions set out in the programme for government delivery plan. I will report on progress to Parliament in the autumn. It is equally vital that adult mental health services are considered in a coherent and complementary way. We will need to put in place a much broader range of services to ensure our approach is preventative and provides the right treatment at the right time. Our broader healthcare services, community services and wider society need to help people across Scotland to maximise good mental health. We all need to promote what good mental health means in the same way we promote what it means to be physically healthy. We will drive this change through investments in changing primary care, our work on distress brief interventions, better access to mental health professionals and our commitment to seeing the delivery of the access waiting time standards. Alongside this work, we will help people across Scotland benefit from digital services such as NHS Inform, Breathing Space and online cognitive behavioural therapy. The programme for government delivery plans sets out clear actions and timescales for doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. We are also working to protect and realise our commitments to a rights-based approach. There are currently two major reviews underway on reform of the Adults with Incapacity Act and a review of how the Mental Health Act meets the needs of those with learning disability and autism. We will continue to support stakeholders who are working to ensure people can fully enjoy their rights, free from stigma and discrimination. In August, we published Scotland's Suicide Prevention Action Plan, Every Life Matters, setting out our vision of a Scotland where suicide is preventable, where help and support is available to anyone contemplating suicide, as well as to those who have lost a loved one. As the plan makes clear, I want to build in our good work by reducing the suicide rate by a further 20% by 2022. Collaborative leadership must be at the heart of our approach, which is why we established a National Suicide Prevention Leadership Group under the chair of, for, of former Deputy Chief Constable Rose Fitzpatrick. The group will set out its plans to make this happen shortly, and its work will be backed by £3 million in funding over the course of this Parliament. Presiding officer, we need bold, dynamic thinking to ensure that our mental health and well-being is supported as well as our physical health. I am determined to accelerate the pace of change. I have mentioned the word reform several times during this speech, and that is what we will see. Achieving this will be dependent on delivering change across the whole system. We will work in partnership with local government and others. We must all recognise the role we have to play and the importance of getting this right together. We must do this in a way that ensures that the rights of individuals are always placed at the centre of decision making. It's not just what we do, but how we do it. This is essential to making lives better, to fostering recovery and hope, and to bringing the real and decisive change that Scotland wants to see. Thank you very much, Minister. The Minister will now take questions on her statement. I have 20 minutes to allow questions, so can I ask those members who wish to ask a question to press their request to speak buttons now, and I call Annie Wells, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer.
and thank you to the Minister for foresight of her statement. I welcome the report. There is no one across this chamber who doesn't want to see mental health be given the commitment it needs. However, there are still questions that need to be asked. At the moment, almost a third of children are not being seen for mental health treatment within 18 weeks, which is completely unacceptable. The task force has recommended a reduction to 12 weeks, which is still extremely long, time to wait. And yet there is no mention of this in the Minister's statement. Can the Minister tell us if the Scottish Government intends to reduce waiting times to 12 weeks? And will the Minister make a personal commitment to solving the CAMS crisis by this time next year? And despite a whole section dedicated to workforce priorities in the draft budget, there was absolutely no mention of the commitment to recruit 800 additional mental health workers, bearing in mind that only three community link workers were recruited between January and September of this year, despite the Scottish Government's commitment to recruit 250 by the end, the end of this session. Can the Minister tell me what progress has been made? Minister. Uh, I thank Annie Wells for her question there and I am grateful for her support in terms of improving mental health care across our country. This morning um, the Children and Young People's uh, Mental Health Task Force launched their delivery plan as she alluded to, the group co-chaired by Dame Dr Denise Coya and a member of the Youth Commission. Um, it, it was commissioned and, and chaired by her and a member of the Youth Commission was commissioned by the Scottish Government in partnership with COSLA and reported to both of us. Um, in addition, this morning I announced an additional £4 million for CAM services to increase staffing levels which are already at a record high. These additional staff will help to increase capacity in the system and help to drive forward some of the changes that we need to increase early intervention and to promote mental health and wellbeing. And this in turn will help us to reduce demand for specialist services, allowing specialist services to see and treat children and young people who require more specialist treatment more quickly. Getting children and young people the appropriate help and support they need when they need it is a Scottish Government priority. You asked about the 800 additional workers and I'm quite happy to give Annie Wells a, a, an update on where we are there. So integrated authorities have uh, devolved responsibility for health and social care for their areas and therefore it's vital that they plan and take into account local needs in collaboration with the relevant partners to ensure that it's the best use of this additional resource. And that's why the Scottish Government is currently working with integrated authorities on this commitment and how they are reaching decisions on the allocation of the additional workers to the key settings set out in the Mental Health Strategy Action 15 in consultation with their partners. As part of our discussions with the Chief Officers, we're also working on putting in place a reporting framework which will capture information on workforce allocation, the location of the workforce and details of the tra trajectory towards the 800 a total by 2021-22 and part of the, uh, the delivery board that I will be chairing will be overseeing some of that work. You don't need to make complaints off stage, I'm handling this matter. Uh, Ms Lennon, you asked your question, your answer allowed slightly longer answers at the beginning but afterwards I expect short questions and succinct <coughs> answers. Front benchers, Monica Lennon please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I thank the Minister for her statement. Scottish Labour welcomes additional investments uh, in mental health services and a commitment to raise the bar further. We share uh, the same ambition for Scotland to have world-class mental health services. When the Scottish Youth Parliament published its 2016 report, Mental Health, Our Generation's Epidemic, um, it was a chilling moment. And I'm proud that fighting for access for school-based counselling has been a, a Labour priority in recent years. And I'm grateful the government is now committed to delivering this. It's not just in children and young people's services that we need to see real change. And I pay tribute today to campaigners like Gillian Murray and Karen McKeown, who have lost loved ones to suicide. And because of people like them, who've kept pressure on people like me on, on this parliament, we are seeing real action being taken but we have to keep listening to people like them and we have to go further still because Gillian Murray is saying it's not just Tayside where there are problems, it's all over Scotland. That's why she's calling for an inquiry nationally. Karen McKeown has said she doesn't want sympathy, she wants action and she still wants answers. And if we look at Dame Coya herself... No, I'm afraid um, I need a question. You've gone over your minute. In conclusion then, so Dame Coy has also reinforced there's still a lack of good data. So we need to fill these data gaps to complete our understanding. Will the does the Minister agree and will she address these concerns? Is a full review of services something she's taken forward through some of the announcements that she's made today? Minister. 
Uh, I thank Monica Lennon for her question and again I welcome the, the cross-party support for improving mental health services. I think this is something that should be done out with a, a, a party politic uh, arena. Um, I, as I alluded to in my um, statement, or as I mentioned in my statement, the Suicide Prevention Leadership Group will shortly be publishing their delivery plan. Now, there have been on that leadership group people personally affected by bereavement by suicide, um, and there has been a lot of uh, input from people who have been affected by suicide. I know that Rose Fitzpatrick has met many families unfortunately affected by that and we will be working towards as i said in my statement reducing the rates of suicide by a further 20 percent um, and uh, I, I also agree with what monica lynn is saying that certainly data is is a, an issue that we have come up against There's certainly dame denise has has identified that as an issue there and that's one of the work streams that she'll be looking at is uh, looking at developing better data but it's also something that we'll be looking at right across mental health services. And again, the, the mental health uh, group that I'll be chairing, I'm sure that's an issue that will come up there. Thank you. I now have something like 14 minutes and 11 questions. So let's get through this in an orderly fashion. You set the bar, Ms Ewing. Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Minister for her statement and say that I very much welcome the four million announcement which will fund much needed additional CAM staff across Scotland. But in my Cowton Beath constituency, I have been contacted on a number of occasions by worried parents of young people not getting the timely CAMS autism assessment that they need to flourish at school. Can the Minister clarify, therefore, what will now change in Fife as a result of her announcement today? Minister. Uh, as outlined in the Task Force Delivery Plan published this morning, we will take forward a specific work stream covering neurodevelopmental services. Young people with neurodevelopmental conditions such as autism and ADHD may require specific support with a neurodevelopmental focus. They may also benefit from specialist clinical CAMs. Additionally, I understand NHS Fife has recently undertaken an ASD service redesign for their child diagnostic pathway, and this new ASD pathway will ease the waiting times in NHS Fife. Miles Briggs, followed by Fulton McGregor. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The latest data shows 26 young people in Lothian were waiting over a year to be seen by mental health professionals. Totally unacceptable. This is Scotland's young people, our future minister. So can I ask, is the Scottish Government committed to a 12-week target for young people getting CAM services or not? Minister. Uh, I agree with Mr Briggs that uh, to wait over a year is not acceptable and that's why this morning I announced a £4 million additional funding for CAMS to look at freeing up capacity so that we can be addressing some of those longer waits but also looking at developing the services that we need, the early intervention services that we need which will prevent and help people, prevent them from developing uh, a, a more severe uh, illness, but also help people at an earlier stage. Fulton McGregor, followed by Mary Fee. Thank you, President Officer. We know that there is a link between exercise, leisure and relaxation techniques in mental health. How is the government working with leisure and fitness providers, such as Leisure Trust, particularly in disadvantaged communities, where access to such facilities may be more limited, to provide opportunities for everyone, including young people, to access these services as part of a comprehensive package to meet mental health needs? Minister. Uh, thank you, Mr McGregor, for that question. We need to consider barriers to participating in sport and physical activity, which are often complex and varied. We need to help people overcome these issues and enjoy the clear benefits that sport and physical activity can have on their physical and mental health. Um, adopting a person-centred approach and delivering them consistently across the sport and physical activity community, we can create services and activities which meet the needs of communities and target groups. In partnership with Sports Scotland, the Robertson Trust and Spirit 2012, we've already invested £1 million to community-based sport and physical activity projects in Scotland in a new Changing Lives Through Sport and Physical Activity Fund managed by Spirit 2012, aimed at changing lives and creating a more inclusive and healthier na uh, nation. Mary Fee, followed by Alison Johnson. Thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Minister what specific support the Scottish Government will provide or have been recommended to provide by the task force to provide assistance to a family where a person with poor mental health has taken their own life? Minister. Uh, I, I, the, 
I'm a bit confused, is it the, the um, Children and Young People's Task Force or the Suicide Prevention Task Force? Okay. Well, if I, if I can look, the Suicide Prevention Leadership Group is, a, is about to deliver their delivery plan, and one of the, the actions in that was looking at providing support, a consistent support for people who have been bereaved by suicide. This is an issue that has been raised with me personally. I'm sure it's been raised with many people in the chamber, families finding themselves really feeling cast adrift and at a time of absolute crisis and, 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 and unbelievable difficulties in their life. So that, that is one of the actions that they will be looking at is providing consistent support for families and people who have lost a loved one, so not just confining it. Alison Johnston, followed by Alec Cole Hamilton. Thank you. Is the Minister confident that the pledge to create 80 to 90 new additional councillors in further and higher education over the next four years sufficient to tackle what NUS Scotland describes as a mental health crisis in our universities? Minister. Uh, thank Alison Johnson for that uh, question. At the moment, um, we are carrying out a scoping exercise looking at um, where we currently have councillors within higher and further education uh, so that we can better plan where we can uh, provide those, those uh, services so that they do meet the needs of young people in higher and further education. Alec Cole-Hamilton followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Minister knows she enjoys the support of these benches in the delivery of her work here. I'm very keen and very happy to see the investment creating 350 new councillors in Scotland schools. But all told, there are 700,000 pupils in Scottish schools, 43% of whom may require mental health support at any one time. That's 2,000 councillors. Uh, students or pupils per councillor. So can the Minister signal to the Chamber today that this is just the start of a package of investment in councillors and does she share my view that we should see something in the order of quadrupling the number of councillors so that we can serve every Thank you Mr Scotland? Cole Hamilton. Long question Minister. Thank you Mr Cole Hamilton and I'm always happy to receive support for mental health from uh, the Liberal Democrat uh, benches. Um, school councillors are, are not the only resource that are going to be available to children and young people. So uh, we are uh, rolling out a uh, train the trainer uh, in mental health training and uh, mental health first aid to each local authority by the end of academic year 2019-2020 um, so that teachers feel more equipped to assist children. We are also, uh, the task force has recommended that we look at community wellbeing centres. I was at one this morning at the junction, which Mr Cole Hamilton may well be aware of, a fantastic resource where children and young people can drop in and receive counselling without an appointment and can, can receive support and peer support. So this is just, school counsellors are part of a package, part of a layered support, a, a layering of support, including the additional school nurses who will also be, we've got another 250 school nurses who will have a focus on well-being, both physical and mental health well-being. Uh, what we envisage is this will mean that there will be less referrals to CAMS because people will have alternatives there. And so children who require specialist services will have much more rapid access to the services they, they need. So I hope that reassures them. David Torrance, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Minister outline what the Scottish Government is doing to reduce sickness absent from work on the grounds of poor mental health and how increased funding of £27 million in the draft budget will help with improving employees' mental health so they can remain at work? Minister. We all know that work is good for mental health. We want to ensure that we support employers to assist people to stay in work and to support any of their employees who are experiencing poor mental health. The Scottish Government funds NHS Health Scotland to provide a range of programmes to improve mental health in the workplace, including Scottish Mental Health First Aid training. And we are committed to continuing support for this work. And in our engagement paper on suicide prevention, which we published on the 8th of March 2018, we outlined a draft action on the development of a new mental health and suicide prevention training programme. The Scottish Government provides £1 million per year for CME's work to end mental health stigma and discrimination. And a new programme, See Me In Work, has been developed to support employers to create mentally healthy workplaces. Brian Whittle, followed by James Dornan. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I think in previous mental health statements, I have raised the point that the solutions put forward by the Scottish Government deal with those already in crisis. 
Mental Health Foundation highlight the importance of nutrition. Sam H focused on the uh, physical activity to good mental health, as, as uh, Phil McGregor alluded to. So can I ask the Minister will she, how she intends to address uh, people falling into poor, uh, preventing people falling into poor mental health in the first place, perhaps starting with you know, healthcare professionals and teachers, given that they are so crucial to the delivery of this plan. Minister. Thank Mr Whittle for his question. I think uh, the reason that people fall into mental ill health is quite complex. Um, I agree that early intervention is needed and that carrying out physical activity, as I, as I answered to Mr McGregor in his answer, can be very good for, re uh, for relieving uh, mental distress and stress. And I would encourage people to, to keep physically active as that does help their mental health. And as I said in my answer to Mr McGregor, um, we have invested in physical activity and in supporting people to access physical activity and sport is really important. But one of the main drivers of mental illness and mental ill health in this country is poverty. And the party that Mr Whittle belongs to actively supports austerity, benefit sanctions, universal credit rollout, which is promoting uh, rent arrears, homelessness and driving people to food banks. So perhaps Mr Whittle might like to um, think about that before he tries to tell this government about how they should treat people with mental illness. James Dornan followed by Jenny Mara. Um, Minister, more people than ever before are spending a large amount of time in computers and personal devices, which we know that in some cases can have a detrimental impact on an individual's mental health. Can the Minister outline what work the Scottish Government is doing to determine the scale of the issue and what plans, if any, are being made to lessen the impact? didn't see that in the statement, but Minister. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr Dornan. It's important to point out that technology has the potential to be used in a hugely positive way. It can connect and empower people, particularly young people. And the same can be said of specific uses for technology, particularly social media. In today's world, technology can also be crucial in helping young people find the right help and support for any issues that they may be facing and to talk about how they're feeling. They can be especially, it can be especially, especially powerful in the case of mental health, where many people find it easier to describe how they feel online rather than in person. But what is important is promoting the healthy use of technology and particularly the healthy use of social media. However, we are aware of the links between unhealthy social media use and lower mental health and well-being in children and young people. And we recently commissioned a study into the reported worsening mental well-being of young people, specifically teenage girls, and the reasons for this. The results of this study, which will be published shortly, will include analysis of the role of technology and social media. Jenny Mara, followed by Emma Harper, with a brief question, Ms Harper. On the welcome four million cash commitment to CAMS, how will she find the doctors and deploy them to the areas most in need? Tayside CAM service had three full-time consultant vacancies out of seven this summer with money to pay them, but couldn't find the doctors. Now, only 41% of children in Tayside are seen within 18 weeks. That's the worst statistic in Scotland. How will she right. make sure that doctors will go to Tayside to turn around this scandalous statistic? Minister. Yeah, thank, thank Ms Mara for her question. Um, we are anticipating that the workforce that, that will be funded by the additional £4 million will be mainly psychology, nursing and allied health professionals uh, with a very small admin support. Emma Harper, briefly please. Thank you. Um, I welcome the Minister's statement today and I note that the implementation date for 2022 for school nurses. Can I ask also um, when the Minister will be able to give us some information about the mental health counsellors in schools across Dumfries and Galloway in the southwest of Scotland? When can we expect to see the mental health counsellors in the schools? Minister. Uh, we're working to strengthen child and adolescent mental health in schools and higher education and we know that prevention and early intervention make a big difference in reducing the risk of developing mental health problems. To develop the commitment for mental health counsellors in schools, we've developed a suite of aims and principles and are taking forward discussions with key partners to ensure that the commitment is met in full by September 2020. Additionally, the Scottish Funding Council and Scottish Government are considering a financial allocation from the funding committed in the programme for government 
to both sectors as part of the academic year 2019-20 Funding, uh, funding allocations and to enable a first tranche of councillors to be in place by the start of the term commencing September 2019. Thank you and I thank all of you. We reached all questions. There will be a brief pause before we move on to the next statement.